Le'Veon Bell is going in the first round of most fantasy football drafts right now, and it makes sense because Le'Veon Bell was the number one fantasy football running back a season ago. However, he is going to be serving a two-game suspension. So what should you do? Well, Le'Veon Bell is out. I'm Nick Heron with the Fantasy Football Swagger Podcast, and I've got a couple of different options for you guys today. Three options to be exact who could help you get through the first couple of weeks of the season. First on the list today, guys, we have Chris Ivory running back for the New York Jets. He is currently going 68th overall in average draft position. So that means that he is actually going as a running back three or even potentially a running back four for some teams. So that makes him kind of an interesting option here if you're looking to replace your Le'Veon Bell for the first couple of weeks of the season. I like Chris Ivory because I think that he will have some value down the road as well, not just in these first couple of weeks of the season. But if you look at things like his schedule that's coming up. He's going to be actually playing against Cleveland and Indianapolis. Two okay defenses, but not really anything that you should be too worried about. And the great thing is that he's going to get almost all of the carries for the Jets this season, as long as he's healthy anyway, unless somebody else kind of breaks out that we're unaware of at this point in time. Chris Johnson now off the roster. It doesn't look like he's going to be signing with the Jets again. So again, Chris Chris Ivory is the player that I am looking at on the Jets roster as somebody that you could really consider going uh, out there and getting in kind of, you know, like the fifth, sixth round type of an area. You don't really have to invest a whole lot in him and you get a decent backup running back as well. Uh, a player who you could potentially put in as a flex option or even potentially as a running back too some weeks depending on kind of you know the matchups and who you, who else you have on your roster. Now the great thing about Chris Ivory is that I mentioned like I like I mentioned before that he really doesn't have a whole lot of competition in this backfield. So he should get a ton of work this year and I really would not be surprised if he's one of the players who has over 250 touches this season. So with that being said guys, I am definitely saying that you should go out there and really target him if you are somebody that gets Le'Veon Bell. Next on the list, guys, we have Doug Martin running back for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And I know, before any of you say anything, don't crucify me for this one. He's going 60th overall, so he's going at the bottom end of the fifth round in 12-team leagues. So you're really not risking that much to go out there and get Doug Martin. You can get him as an RB3 in most cases. And, uh, you know, to me, I think that value is decent enough. Charles Sims is on the roster. I understand that. But to start the season, it does it does look like Doug Martin is going to be given the chance to at least be the starter to start the season. So that's really kind of what we're looking for. We need somebody that we can play for two weeks or so. And if Doug Martin fits that bill for two weeks, I definitely think you should go out there and risk, uh, you know, a fifth round pick on him or if he even slips a little bit further than that, that would be excellent as well. The great thing about Doug Martin is that he has an awesome skill schedule to start the season. He is going to be playing against the Titans and the New Orleans Saints, two of the absolute worst defenses in the league from a season ago. Now granted, we do expect improvements from both of those units, but still, they're probably going to be in the bottom half of the league all throughout the season, and early in the year, they probably haven't gelled together enough to actually become that better force that we're going to be hoping to see from them throughout the season. So I, I really do like Doug Martin early in the year. I think that for the first three, four weeks of the season, you might actually see some hype around Doug Martin, especially if he performs really well in these first couple of games. And if he does, that leaves open the opportunity, of course, to trade him down the road. So that's always an intriguing option as well if he does end up panning out for you. And once you get Le'Veon Bell back, then maybe you don't need Doug Martin as your running back three. And maybe you can trade him, get an upgrade at quarterback, get a better tight end, uh, make an upgrade at wide receiver, something like that that'll help your starting lineup just a little bit more. Or, of course, you can always keep Doug Martin if you want. Uh, I just don't expect that he's going to remain the starter throughout the season. Season. So that's why I'm kind of targeting him early in the year as somebody that I think you kind of grab, hope that he produces against those bad defenses, and then you can ship him off for something better. And last but not least, guys, we have D'Angelo Williams, of course, the backup for Le'Veon Bell. Uh, this is a guy who has performed well in the past. And I know, obviously, it's been quite a long time since that happened, and there's been a lot of people that have been burned by D'Angelo Williams. If you're a longtime fantasy owner, chances are at some point you've been burned by D'Angelo Williams. So I understand the hesitation that some people are going to have regarding this. But just like Doug Martin before him, we're not necessarily advocating that you're going to have D'Angelo Williams for the entirety of the season, or even that he's going to be a player that's going to be a superstar for you. But the truth is, is that it's valuable to have a guy's 
handcuff, especially when you're talking about a high caliber offense like the Pittsburgh Steelers offense is right now. They're a great passing team. They're a great running team. They're really potentially going to be competing for one of those top two or three spots as far as total points on offense, which means that having the running back that's going to be out there for the first first couple of weeks of the season is extremely valuable, even if he's not as talented anymore as Le'Veon Bell. Williams does have some skill, obviously. We've seen him produce in the past, like I had mentioned. So I'm not overly worried about him being, you know, run down or anything like that over the course of his career. It's going to be fresh into the season. We're, we're watching him play against two defenses that are a little bit depleted from what they were last season in San Francisco and New England. Those are the two teams that he's going to be playing against while Le'Veon Bell is out. So I, I'm kind of intrigued a little bit by D'Angelo Williams, given the fact that, of course, he's going to be, like I said, the starter for the first couple of games and then again we do get to keep him as our backup and kind of our handcuff if we do have Le'Veon Bell on the roster. Now the one thing that I will say guys is that regardless of what you do in uh, as far as you know acquiring players the best thing that you can do if you draft Le'Veon Bell or any running back or anybody that is going to be suspended uh, for early in the season this goes going uh, this goes for the future as well uh, or any time between now and the start of the season if anybody else gets suspended the truth is, is that the best thing that you can do is just go after depth at that position. And it doesn't, necess it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to go out there and spend all of your first picks on a, a running back if you draft Le'Veon Bell. But really what it means is that you just have to try and get the guys that you think are more solidified. So, you, you know, I think the big idea here, and you saw it with Chris Ivory, Doug Martin, and then of course with D'Angelo Williams, is that all three of those players are almost guaranteed to get the majority of the touches for their team in the first couple of weeks of the season. They're, they're all veteran running backs, so they're all players that we've seen production from in the past, but they're also all players that maybe don't have quite as high of an upside, which means that of course we can get them later in the draft and don't have to spend quite as much on them, and we don't really want to given the fact that we're not expecting them to be our starter or down the road we just kind of want them for those first couple of se or first couple of weeks of the season so just keep that in mind with whatever you do guys hopefully this video helped you out if it did please do me a favor and hit that like button subscribe to the channel if you guys are if you're new to the channel I would greatly greatly appreciate it thank you guys so much for all the support leave any comments or questions that you have in the comment section below and I'll talk to you guys again soon